Good morning and afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here in the home weather office with another very detailed update on Tropical Storm Idalia as this rapidly intensifies and moves north towards the big bend of Florida, expected to bring catastrophic, life-threatening flooding, storm surge, heavy rainfall, and strong winds. Yes, we could be looking at a major hurricane, folks, on the approach to Florida as early as Wednesday morning or Wednesday early afternoon, depending on how fast this actually moves. Looking at the latest true color visible satellite imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com on Idelia, and I'll tell you what, this is trying to get better organized pretty quickly right now in the northwestern portion of the Caribbean. You can even see some very explosive deep convection right where the center is likely to be located. And the question remains, is this going to become a major hurricane? Well, we got some clues when we take a zoomed in view on the imagery. And right now, what we're looking for is a lot of moisture that is wrapping around the center on the northern quadrant of the circulation. And we are seeing that occur right now as I'm making this morning's video. By the way, we're going to have two videos out today. This is a double header day because of the quicking or the quick evolving situation in regards with Tropical Storm Idalia. So very deep convection. We have a lot of moisture, boy. I mean, tons of moisture wrapping in on the southern and eastern quadrants of the circulation. And this is going to lead to some explosive intensification over the next 24 to 36 hours. As this remains over exceptionally warm um, ocean heat content and sea surface temperatures. In fact, let's take a look at the Cuban radar. Looking at radar, you can see where all that deep convection is located on the southeastern quadrant with some banding futures that are trying to get better organized. We also have had quite a bit of lightning and some pretty intense winds on this southern side of the system, which indicates that the system is trying to get better organized for us, for those people that live in Florida. Definitely need to be watching the progress of this system. Now, take a look at the latest recon data for this morning. And yes, they have made several passes through the center. And they have found weaker winds, just slightly weaker uh, uh, with these three passes. Which is a good thing because it was stronger last night. It is beginning to weaken just a little bit. But there is some fear this could intensify much quicker very quickly. We already have seen that happen since yesterday morning when it went from 40 miles an hour to 65 miles an hour early this morning. So that's a 15 mile an hour wind jump in a 24 hour period. So yes, Recon is out there right now investigating this, but we also have another or more Recon data that I wanted to share with you. This is the G4 aircraft that flew um very high up to provide better data for the models and they've flown in this general quadrant so this was their flight path that they took they do this all the time to again feed the models better numerical weather data to be fed into the 06 and the 12z model output and we have had that today as you can see here with a lot of drops on soundings if we even go back and look at that we can see what our drop zones do indicate. However, there is some dry air that is being found on the aircraft at 500 millibars in the central Gulf of Mexico. As you can see here, these brown colors at 500 millibars, which is 18,000 feet high or higher, indicate that the air is fairly dry. While we have somewhat moist low levels, that's what we see here. That's why the uh, upper level drop zone missions are actually more important than what the, it might seem. So now we're gonna look at the latest uh, hurricane intensity models here, because this is very important. We have had some corrections, but we also have had a slightly weaker output with the models today. So this look at the HAFS A model on Idelia. I think I said that right. Here is Western Cuba right here. Here is Tropical Storm Force Winds. Here is the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, if you are down there across um, Play Del Carmen, you kind of get the idea. Well, let's kind of move this forward and let's see how strong this actually might end up getting. 
Everyone is saying this is going to become a major hurricane. Uh, I will say that towards the end of the video, or kind of in a little bit, on what my thoughts are, okay? Because I don't want to go too crazy and hype this up too much. So by 36 hours, this is by Tuesday, August the 29th. This is much slower uh, uh, among a lot of the models here. So a slower system, which means it could intensify fairly quickly. Pressure down in 975 millibars. And then supposedly the house A does show rapid intensification thereafter by Tuesday night in a Wednesday on the approach to the big bend of Florida. We could be having a strong hurricane making its way into say the northern portion of florida here the tallahassee as well as jacksonville again a major hurricane folks this could have winds greater than 140 or not 140 120 miles an hour if we just look at the halves a what about the halves b this is not another hurricane model that i like to show you all and this also indicates that the system could explosively intensify too Tuesday night into Wednesday. By the way, we're going to be live all day on this system. We're going to be providing you some of the most accurate weather information that we have possible. So again, we're going to be live early tomorrow morning. We're going to start the stream probably at 6 or 7 in the morning. We're also going to do flight simulator. So I'm actually going to take the um, do some recon missions, fly through the system for you all. This is going to be an exciting day for the channel. So if you guys haven't already, please subscribe, share, and like. Because it's not for entertainment, but it's also because I want to show you all that I can fly through a system on Flight Simulator along to go with actual real recon data. So now when we take a look at uh, Idelia here, um, the system could intensify even more. 943 millibars. We have had some pretty nasty model runs among them this is the 18z from yesterday and it showed at 943 millibars today much slower which means this could intensify even more potentially maybe even a category 4 hurricane based on this specific model that we're looking at okay so therefore when we look at the nhc forecast this is um where uh we might see ideally a move and I want to repeat to you all right now, we're going to read the key messages on this system. I repeat, there are hurricane warnings out right now for the Big Bend of Florida, Tallahassee. You need to be taking this very downright seriously. If you're in Jacksonville, you're under a tropical storm watch on the other side of Florida, that is. So this could be catastrophic, okay? We're looking at some big, nasty impacts. And yeah, that letter M that you see on the screen, that's a, that's a major hurricane. That's what the NHC is forecasting. So the question is, when will tropical storm force winds arrive in your area? Well, we're looking at now Tuesday night when tropical storm force winds should arrive across the area. And speaking of this, this is Wednesday morning, 7 a.m. for a landfall. So my live stream, when it starts early in the morning, because YouTube only saves 12 hours of uh, DVR data on their uh, platform. So we're going to do two live streams. So we're going to each stream is going to last at least 11 and a half hours long. We're going to have another stream when the thing actually makes landfall. We're I'm going to be up all night. We're, we're going to track this together. Pat's Path is going to be here. Ethan B is going to help me. Even we got a actual certified meteorologist. Weather Nazario. Yeah, Weather Nazario, folks. He's also um, going to be helping um, out too. So if you guys, again, um, want to partic um, participate in the stream, that will be awesome. So we have a lot of help that is on the way for this stream too. Okay, now looking at the key messages for Tropical Storm Idelia, uh, I want to make myself clear. This is pretty, pretty important. Okay, four points to read right now. So the first point, again, is there is danger of life-threatening, possibly unsurvivable storm surge inundation along portions of the Florida Gulf Coast where a storm surge warning is in effect, including Tampa Bay and the Big Bend region of Florida. Inundation up to 11 feet 
11 feet of storm surge above ground level is expected somewhere between the um, Aquilia uh, River. Residents in these areas should follow any advice given by local officials. Hurricane conditions are expected within portions of the hurricane warning area along the Florida Gulf Coast with the potential for destructive waves where the core of Idalia moves on shore. Strong winds will also spread inland across portions of the northern Florida near the track of the center of Idalia. Areas of flash and urban flooding, some of which may be locally significant and life-threatening, are expected across portions of the west coast of Florida. The Florida Panhandle and southern Georgia Tuesday into Wednesday, spreading into portions of the eastern Carolinas Wednesday into Thursday. Hurricane force winds are expected across far western Cuba later today. Heavy rainfall is expected across portions of the western Cuba and may produce areas of flash flooding. So again, we're looking at quite a bit of rainfall. And before we actually look at that, I think it's a good idea that we look at our precipitation forecast on our hurricane models because this is going to give us an idea. So when this thing makes landfall, you can see very intense rainfall, strong winds, a lot of flooding is going to be a big issue with this. And look at this. Look at all that rain coming down over southeastern Georgia. The Carolinas going to get a lot of rainfall out of this system. And then eventually that goes offshore by Thursday. So just because this moves onshore and it weakens, I'm telling you, the rain is going to be exceptional with this system. So I wanted to just make that clear with you all. And therefore, when we look at the NHC rain forecast, yeah, they're forecasting 6 to 10 inches of rainfall between Tallahassee and Jacksonville. Look at this. For Augusta, Savannah could get as much as 2 to 4 inches of rainfall. Wilmington, Cape Hatteras could get 6 plus inches of rainfall. Tampa Bay, maybe 6 inches. Again, rainfall amounts within the 6 to 10 in 6 to 10 inch range could be catastrophic and life-threatening if not taken seriously. So again, I want to heed the warning. Hurricane warnings out. We're talking about devastating impacts with Idelia as it intensifies very quickly. So now looking at the hurricane models here, this is the spaghetti plot. And we have a pretty good idea now that there's going to be a landfall somewhere in the Big Bend. But again, do not use this map to make decisions. Seek official info. And that means go to the NHC.gov for more information on that. So that's a look at the track guidance. This is the 12Z um, as of today. Looking at the 12Z intensity forecast, again, no models do not indicate a major hurricane. And that's why we've got to be careful. There's not a lot of likelihood that this is going to become a major hurricane. Some of you are already saying this is going to become a Cat 4, Cat 5. I expect this to become a 110 mile an hour system. So my intensity forecast is somewhere up in here. Oh, all right. So I do forecast that this is going to become a strong category two hurricane, but I'm not quite comfortable yet saying a major hurricane yet, just because there's a lot of uncertainty that is out there. So now you guys were probably wondering what system are we looking at here? Well, Guess what? This is Major Catastrophic Franklin. Franklin has undergone some explosive intensification overnight last night with a very well clear eye right now. A whole different situation than what we were looking at a couple of days ago. This is now a very nasty, ugly Category 4 hurricane in such a way we had recon out there in it and it is now down to 938 millibars. Yeah, that's Look at Recon, and they did find winds here that did reach about 120 knots, which is enough to upgrade this to a Category 4 from a Category 3. So, thing has just exploded, and look at the pressure drop there. That is 43, 42, 41, 40, 39, 38. Five millibar drop in pressure in an hour, which means this could be a lot stronger than what we might see. So right now, air um, winds are at 145 miles an hour. There are tropical storm watches issued for Bermuda. And if this remains a major hurricane or gets even any closer, we could see hurricane watches or hurricane warnings on the island of Bermuda in the next couple of days. 
Well, anyways, everyone, that's going to do with today's video. I sure, sure hope you liked the video. We're going to do another special update on this system this afternoon. You definitely need to stay tuned for this. We're going to go live on this all day tomorrow. Make sure you're... Um, you're ready for that so we can give you the latest information. Ethan B., Weather Nazario, Pat's Path Predictor. We have a lot of people that are going to be here helping you all get prepared for Idelia. Since this is now a catastrophic, life-threatening system, that could be a realization for the Big Bend of Florida. Well, otherwise, that's going to do it. Share, like, and subscribe, and I'll have an afternoon video on this in about six or seven hours.